watching Austin Underground. I'm Belicia. I'm here with Diarrhea Planet. These dudes are Brent, Hoden, Emmett, Mike, Evan, Tough Gus. Sweet. They're a really rad band from Nashville, Tennessee, right? True. Alright, so I'm a huge fan of your band, and each time I say, oh yeah, Diarrhea Planet is amazing, everybody says Diarrhea Planet, like the name. So I need to ask, what? What was the decision behind the name? Yeah, we threw a William S. Burroughs novel against a wall and uh, pointed to the first couple of words we saw. Diarrhea planet. Who would have thunk? Is that it? That's it. <laughs> That's, That's, it. That's it. the truth. Oh. I swear to you. Okay, see, I love it. Okay, so y'all have been playing South by Southwest, Bonnaroo, Governor's Ball. Which has been your personal favorite? That's hard to say. Uh, Pickathon was magical. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say Pickathon was another level of just the way that they put that festival together and run things. Um, it's really fun for the artists and the, the I think the crowds that come out too. And I, Hangout was like the same way too. I felt like like they just really went above and beyond um, making those festivals great. And Governor's Ball was absolutely wonderful too. Like the people who run that like were so much fun to be around and. Like all three of those festivals really stood out to me as being uh, sort of like the most uh, professional and well put together and, uh, you know, r ran more smoothly than anything else we did. I know we all just had a lot of fun at those three and specifically, it seemed like. Yeah, right, cool. So I've been to a couple of your shows and you get really rowdy. Like I remember at Governor's Ball, one of you climbed the rafters. Was it you? <laughs> Who was it? And you started shredding from the top. Can you tell me about that? Did you just like decide, did you like look at it and like, oh, I'm gonna climb that? Uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty much it, more or less. I just, yeah, saw a scoring opportunity and uh, pursued it. Yeah. So were y'all always this rowdy or just like, like started getting more intense? We just want to keep it exciting for the fans. It's very exciting. I would argue, I would argue I would argue that uh, we used to be rowdier, but I think that um, kind of got to the point where it was like, saw a lot of hospital visits looming in the uh, near future, and we decided to dial it back a little bit, probably around 2010. Started paying I, for our own health I, insurance. Yeah, I remember I remember like one <laughs> one or two shows specifically that, you know, you got home and had like bruised ribs that you're kind of wondering if they were cracked and stuff, and it's kind of being like, all right, maybe it's time to like, like still be rowdy but not like be as like self abusive and you know like uh, just you know beating yourself up constantly. But climbing the rafters that was that was safe. Yeah. You know I'd, some of those songs have been playing them for like four years. I could probably do it upside down in a dunk tank. At this point I'm just get so have. so yeah I get so I don't know what to do with my hands. So I I see stuff like that and I get real locked on and uh, it's a liability to myself and my band. It's great. So y'all are a big band. So what is the collaboration like when creating music? Typically, I mean, there's some things we kind of jam out. And typically, one of us kind of writes a song or like a skeletal structure. Sometimes it's like very specific. It's kind of different for every song. Like everybody kind of, you know, like we. I, it's hard to say. I mean, and a lot of songwriters say the same thing. It's like it's, a lot of times, you know, like you never really find one thing works every time. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of just experiment and it's like you sort of know what will work best in every situation, whether you know, like you have an idea that's so complete and in a certain space that you need to pursue it to its full extent, or it's like you might have a looser idea that you're like, well, the band's gonna kill this. Like, I don't need to, you know, like go all the way with this one. Like the band will make this happen. So it kind of is different for every single song, I think. All right, cool. So how many guitars are in your band? Four. Four. Plus a bass. Bass is very important. So I have friends in bands, and usually two is pretty tough to balance out. So did, at the beginning, we were like, yeah, we're going to have four guitars, or like, was it just an instant decision? Five was way too many. Uh, six or seven works pretty well. Eight, it's like, mmm. Nine was nice. Nine was nine was pretty good. We were feeling it out, but... Uh, Acoustic to add a little bit of a uh, new sonic texture. Yeah. Four was uh, a nice uh, root of 16. It worked really well. 
Okay, so how do you balance out all the guitars? How do you make it sound amazing still? We only, we only play with two of the amps running at any given night. What we do beforehand is play Settlers of Catan, and uh, whoever loses, you know, they get eliminated. And once more, we actually only have two, and then we have tracks that play from the soundboard. So that way it's a lot easier to kind of get the mix, you know, manageable. And that way you can still, you know, somebody can run up and put on a little show for the fans. But uh, the Governor's Ball, for instance, they turned me on when I got up there. You know what I mean? And that way the hope is you're not remembering, oh, wow, there was one guy going crazy. It's like, oh, the whole band sounded incredible while they're doing all these theatrics. And that way it really frees us up to not really have to play. And we can do whatever we want on stage and make it look really cool, but we don't have to worry about the sound. We've been doing that since probably 2011. All right, so you just released your new EP, Aliens in the Outfield. All right, so your last album was I'm Rich Behind Beyond Your Wildest Dreams. That's right. So what is what has been the major change between those two? We produced this last one in Nashville. Uh, we recorded it at... At Ronnie's place. Ronnie's place. But, I, was, I was about to say soundstage. Yeah, uh, Ronnie's place. Where's Ronnie's uh, place? It's on Music Row. Uh, we tracked it with Justin Francis. Then we had um, our guys Vance Powell and Ed Spear over at Sputnik Sound uh, mix it. Um, and I think we're going to be working with him for the next record. Mm -hmm. um, so it, you can hear it's a little more polished than I'm Rich. And uh, we had a little bit more time in the mixing process. and So we could be a little more discerning with... Um, uh, how we wanted things to turn out. Uh, I'm Rich, we, we booked the studio time and tracked everything in four days. We went from demos to uh, rough mixes that went to mastering and... Three weeks or two weeks. Yeah, it, it was, uh, we worked at a breakneck pace. So this was a little more um, focused of a process. And I think we're gonna keep moving in that direction. Also, also like the difference being between um, the two, two like, uh, Aliens is a lot of songs that we had kind of laying around for a while. Um, I think there was like two that were pretty, like your song was a newer one yeah. and like Peg Daddy was new. Um, but they were all kind of just weirdo songs that we couldn't really fit on anything and we're never really happy with the version of, but we really wanted to put them out because there was good enough parts in a few of them that we were like, oh, we really just want to do these songs. And so I'm Rich was like kind of written as like sort of like, you know, a complete piece where it was like kind of feel like Purpose, a little more purposeful, and uh, I'm rich. Or I mean, Aliens was like a little bit more. This is just a couple random songs that we had laying around. Mm -hmm. All right, so y'all just had a music video come out for Platinum Girls, where y'all are in like some spacesuits, and is it whipped cream or foam that's spraying something like that? Yeah, something, just and then like a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. So what was going on there? What was the it story was behind the video? Pete and Pete. Yeah. Pete and Pete theme song. It was just like. The idea was to, we shot that at, on location at the Pete and Pete house, like from the show. And um, all the other scenes in it that weren't in that theme song from the show uh, were all different like parts of the show that uh, happened in different episodes that um, the crew that we worked with on it all thought would be fun to try to like recreate different moments from that show specifically. So entirely uh, 90s Nickelodeon themed uh, Pete and Pete video. That's really cool. So what are the rest of the plans for South By? Are y'all playing rock, paper, scissors? Uh, no. Just want to make sure we have plenty of time to load in and get those tracks set up at the, the soundboard because, you know, every, any given night we don't know who's going to be on and who's going to be off, so we gotta, we got to make sure we have enough time to work with our sound engineer. Our, our tour manager, Big Time, has been pretty instrumental in making sure all our cues are set up and uh, making sure we uh, hang out with our friends at 2512, uh, drink plenty of Shiner Bach, get down, dip my body in the river, uh, strike some curious poses, talking about getting some hot dogs, maybe uh, death metal pizza, talking about getting Mike here a kangaroo in a leather jacket. Are you going to get one? Plan to. Alright, I hope you do. So, I had one more question. We'll edit this out, me being confused. Oh, you were talking about a new album. So when is that one coming out and what can you tell me about it that you can, you're legally, you can legally tell me about it. Still under investigation. It's going to be a uh, triple LP uh, recorded at the Ryman in Nashville, uh, 32 songs, and uh, you know Vance is going to come in and going to do the uh, straight to vinyl cut with the third man crew. So, all right, sweet. Well, thanks for doing the interview, guys, and I hope you have an amazing face melting performing South by Southwest sets. Thanks, Bill. Hey.